Okay, in this chapter, we'll talk about four position method for solving nonlinear equation. You are free to share under certain conditions. Okay, in chapter 03.06, we're talking about four position method for solving a nonlinear equation. Let us say, suppose we have a nonlinear function f of x equal to zero, as indicated in equation one. So, for that nonlinear function, if we plot it, you can see the horizontal axis is the x axis and the vertical axis represent the function value. And let's say for the sake of discussion, the function f of x can be plotted and it looks like this red curve that I show you right here. Now, to find out the root of this nonlinear equation, f of x equal to zero, it means to find out the value of x such that the function equal to zero over there. So if you look on this graph, you can see the exact root of this nonlinear equation will be around right there. So now, in order to find out that exact root, there are several different methods available. And one of the very common methods that you have learned already in another chapter, which is called the bisection method. The bisection method. Well, the reason I have to review the bisection method here very briefly is because the fall position method in this chapter and the bisection method that you have learned earlier are very, very similar. In the bisection method, the first thing is we require to have uh, two initial gas, which we call the x lower bound and the x upper bound. Well, we want to make sure that the function value at x lower bound, which is represented by this distance right there, and the function value at x upper bound, which is represented by this distance right there, they must be in opposite side. Or mathematically, we say function value fxl times function value fxu must be negative. So which is exactly in this case, because the function value at xl right now is negative, and the function value fxu right now is positive. And because of that reason, that means we say the root, the exact root, must be somewhere between the lower bound, x lower bound, and x upper bound. Now, in the bisection method, after we already identified the bracket between x lower bound and x upper bound, the new predicted root will be shown according to equation 3, which is equal to halfway between the lower bound and the upper bound. So for this particular example, as you can see, since the lower bound is here, the upper bound is right there, halfway between x lower bound and x upper bound would be around here. So if we use the bisection method to predict the improved root, according to equation 3, then the predicted root should be around here. Well, that is nothing wrong with that, except that in that bisection method, we don't take advantage of another in piece of information. For example, in this case, we recognize that the function value at x lower bound, that function value is very close to zero as compared to the function value corresponding to x upper bound. And that mean what? That mean the exact root should be closer to the x lower bound and further away from the upper bound. And therefore, it will not be a good idea to pick up a halfway point between lower bound and upper bound as the next predicted root. So, in the bisection method, what we want to do 
we just connect between this point right here, which is the function value at x lower bound, and this point right there, which is the function value at upper bound, we connect it by a straight line. So we connect it by this straight line. That straight line will obviously intersect the horizontal x-axis at this location here, and this will be the so-called the new or the next predicted route. As you can see in this particular example, this newly predicted route x sub r right there using the fall position method is a lot better than the newly predicted route right here which is halfway between lower bound and upper bound. So anyway, uh, let us try to figure out how do we find out the equation to help us to figure out the uh, newly predicted route x sub r, as I show you right there. Well, to, to do that, what we can do is we make use of the similar triangular. For example, we can call this is like a point A, point B, point C, point D is here, and point E is there. Okay? And then we recognize that triangular ABC, triangular A, B, C will be similar to triangular E, D, C. E, D, C. Okay? So, based on the similar triangular like that, we can write out the relationship like A, B, A, B, A, B, over E, D, equal to BC, which is this distance, BC, over DC, which is this distance. Okay, so that is come from the similar triangular relationship. Now, what is the value of AB? The value of AB actually is f at x sub l, f the function at x sub l, that will give us the value of a b. The distance uh, uh, over e d, e d if you look on the picture, that is the function value at x, at x sub u, at x sub u, equal to b c the distance BC actually is equal to X sub R subtract X sub L. So you can see BC, that distance, according to the picture, that BC is this distance right here, and that is equal to the big distance from here to there. And that guy is x sub r minus this small distance, which is x sub l. So that is bc. And then similarly, dc, which is the distance from here to there. And that distance dc is equal to x sub u, x sub u minus x sub r minus x sub r. Okay? Now, let's try to take a look at the positive and the, the negative sign. F x sub L will have a negative value. So this guy will have a negative value. Divide by F x sub u. F x sub u will have a positive value. Equal xr minus xl. As you can see from here, xr minus x sub l will be a positive value. Divide by xu minus xr. xu minus xr will be positive as well. So in other words, if you talk about the sign to the picture, we have to change 
the psi of this guy. So instead of saying xr minus x of l, now we may have to change the psi to make it become like uh, minus xr plus xl. When we do that, then this plus will become minus, and then the ratio of the left hand side will have a negative value, and the ratio of the right hand side will also have a negative value. So this equation, basically, this, e this relationship right here is essentially the same thing as the one I will show you on the next slide. So on the next slide, you will see that is shown in equation 4. From equation 4, as we can notice, the function at xl is negative. xr minus xl, according to the previous graph, is positive. And that's why this ratio here will be a negative ratio. And similarly, fxu is positive, xr minus xu is negative, so this ratio is also negative. So equation 4 makes sense, which I already explained to you from the previous slide. Now, after we already agree with equation 4, the next thing we say we want to do will be we multiply these two together, the denominator with the, the other one, and then we equate that with the other product, like this. So when we do that, we get to the next slide, and that basically gives us this equation right here, come from the previous slide. Then from that equation, we can rearrange a little bit, like for example, here you have like uh, xu times fxl with a negative sign, and therefore when you move it to the left hand side, it will become this term. And similarly, you also have a term like negative xl times fxu. That term is right here. Okay, and then the rest you can see you have a, a green term, let's say xr times fxl as indicated in the f green term right there, and that term is right here. And finally, we have the term like xr times fxu. When you move it to the right hand side, it will become negative xr times fxu. So from this equation right here, we should be able to solve for the newly predicted root x sub r. And that is shown in right here as indicated in equation number 5. So basically, the formula to calculate the newly predicted root is shown in equation 5. So this is a formula that you got we call a fall position based on the false position method fall position method. And if you recall, a formula for the bisection method, it is much simpler. The bisection method formula, the, e the formula will be x sub r just simply equal to one half of x lower bound plus x upper bound. So for the fall position, the predicted root formula is slightly more involved as indicated in equation 5. And by the way, equation 5 can also be expressed in a different form as I show you here in equation 6. Or equation 5 can also be expressed in a slightly different form as indicated here in equation 7. As a matter of fact, we can very easily prove that equation 5 and equation 6 are, or equation 7, they're all identical. As a matter of fact, we leave it as a homework, and it shouldn't take more than five or ten minutes to prove it. Okay, so that is the fall position method. Now, let us work with 
some step-by-step -step 